There's less than stellar career as a disciple in the Gospels. We've looked at Peter, the amazing leader in the book of Acts, and now here in this month, we're going to look at Peter, the teacher. What does Peter have to say in his two letters in the Bible? Someone who has come as far as Peter has certainly has something to teach us. So what is that? Well, in chapter 2 of his first letters, he says this. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. In just over two weeks, we have the Minnesota State Fair. And uh, I'll be making my annual pilgrimage, as will a lot of you, to that land of too much to see, too much to eat, and too many people. And I'm a creature of habit. So if you're like me, you have favorites that you want to do every time you go to the State Fair. I always visit the 4-H building. Spent a lot of time there as a youth. Can't leave without seeing the fair's biggest hog. Have to uh, eat a corn dog or a pronto pup, actually. And always make a stop at the all-you-can-eat, all-you-can-drink milk booth. Now, sure, truth be told, I can drink all the milk I want at home. But there's just something about stepping up to that fair booth for a glass of, or two of ice-cold milk on a hot August day. Bonus points if you manage to score a bucket of Sweet Martha's cookies on the way over. <laughs> no, I can't say that normally I crave milk, but I do at the fair. What do you crave? Now, Peter tells us to crave pure spiritual milk. I guess you could say he's the originator of the Got Milk campaign. Remember those advertisements from years ago? The original commercial featured a, a hapless historian who receives a call from a radio station. If he can answer the trivia question, he will win $10,000. And the question is, who shot Alexander Hamilton in the famous duel? Panning out, you see that this man runs a museum entirely devoted to this duel. So he knows the answer. But unfortunately, he has just bitten into a peanut butter sandwich, and it's stuck to the roof of his mouth. With no milk to wash it down, he tries shouting out the answer, Aaron Burr, but it comes out, Dun -dun -dun. and the radio host can't understand him and hangs up. Then comes the tagline, got milk? There are many variations of that ad uh, over the years, including the, the religious one, where this cruel businessman dies, and he goes on, and he discovers that he's in a place where there is this huge plate of cookies, and all of these cartons of milk. He thinks he's gone to heaven, but then he discovers that it's actually hell because all the milk cartons are empty. <laughs> Got milk? I thought they'd given up this promotion but then last week I was driving along the highway and I saw a billboard that said, got milk? And you might also remember the print ads because they usually had some celebrity with a milk mustache. It's one of the most recognizable advertising campaigns in history. Nowadays, imitation milk is all the rage, whether it's oat milk or almond milk or soy milk. But for years, it was dairy milk that was promoted for kids and adults to grow strong and healthy. Three or four cups a day was what the government health officials recommended for children's growth. And in fact, the campaign before Got Milk was all about the health benefits of milk. It wasn't such a good campaign uh, because people don't usually do things for the sake of their health, um, but they do do things because they like the taste or 
they enjoy it. That, that campaign was milk, it does a body good. Any of you remember that one? And it does do a body good if, if you're not lactose intolerant. The protein, the calcium, the, the vitamins, even the fat actually helps to build a strong body. There was a, a recent study of 40,000 people and they found that while people have, have been afraid of, of the fat in milk or in ice cream or in butter for a long time, that actually those with the highest levels of fatty acids in their bodies that come from milk had the lowest risk of heart disease or stroke. Milk does a body good. Now Peter could have been the originator of that slogan too. Milk does a body good, so crave pure spiritual milk so that you may grow in your salvation. Milk helps us to grow. And spiritual milk is the word of God. Spiritual milk is the gospel. It's Jesus, the cornerstone. It's all the good things that God gives us to grow from where we are today to where he wants us to be. From children in the faith to mature Christians, from people who look a lot like the world's immaturity to those who look a lot more like Jesus. In the first chapter of Peter's second letter, he writes that God's divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. That's 2 Peter 1.3. God gives us pure spiritual milk so we can grow up in salvation. You know, Jesus saves us as, he are, as we are, but he doesn't save us to leave us as we are. He saves us to grow up in being closer and closer to God He saves us to grow out in love and service to our neighbors. He saves us to grow deep in our faith and trust in him. And he saves us to grow in, to grow into the holy people we were created to be. Ephesians 4.15 says that we will become in every respect the mature body of Christ who is the head of the body. We will grow if we drink our milk if we crave more and more God's word, God's spirit, God's life-changing love. We'll grow if we drink our milk. But how many people think that being a Christian is something that you just choose one day and then you get on with your life? Been there, done that, got saved, bought the t-shirt. You know, I think about our young people that were at camp this last week. Some of those people made a decision for Christ for the first time. The first time that the Lord really became real to them. But I wonder what will happen now. Will they say, oh, that was a great time back at camp, and then just go back to life as usual? As if it's a been there, done that experience? I hope not. But it's always a temptation A friend was inviting a woman to a Bible study, and the woman said, oh, I don't need that. I already got saved. We aren't saved to stay the same, at the same level of faith and growth for the rest of our lives. We aren't aren't sea squirts. Do you know what a sea squirt is? I didn't, until I was reading this uh, devotional. And sea squirts are, are this most unusual creature. Um, They have many different kinds of of shapes. Some look like grapes. Some look like uh, water balloons. Um, And some even look like hearts. All of them are big blobs that sit on the ocean floor and do nothing all day but suck food in one hole and squirt water out the other. Hence their name. What makes these animals so unusual is that they have no brain. Oh, at one time they did have brains, but they ate them. When a sea squirt is born, it looks something like a tadpole or a little fish. It has a brain and a spinal cord and eyes, and it swims around exploring the world. But then it sees a nice rock, and it decides that that's the place to settle down. So it attaches itself to the rock, 
And since it doesn't need a brain or a spine or eyes to just sit there and eat, its body absorbs them. And for the rest of its life, it no longer has eyes or, or brain or a spine. It just sits there eating and squirting water without a spine or a brain. Now, God didn't choose you, choose you to be his own, to sit there spineless and thoughtless. God chose you to grow up in salvation now that you've tasted that the Lord is good. You know, 20 miles down the road from us, the Vikings are having training camp this month. And whether they're the youngest rookies or the oldest veterans, they're sweating through conditioning, they're practicing their techniques, they are running through the playbook, all so that on August 30th, they will be one of the 53 players chosen to make the team. Now, can you imagine any of these players who are chosen on August 30th, 30th telling the media that day, I am so happy I made the team. Now I just want to sit on the bench. I don't really want to play the game. You know, that'd be ridiculous for a Viking. And Peter would say it's ridiculous for a Christian. Once you're saved, don't sit there. Grow in your salvation. Strive to be better. Strive to be in the game. So what does that look like for a Christian? Well, well Peter puts it this way. In 1 Peter chapter 1, he says, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. And then in his second letter, He says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from, from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Growing up in our salvation means growing in these qualities. Being holy because Jesus is holy. Drinking the pure spiritual milk that God gives us because God has given us everything that we need for a godly life. God has given us a brain and a spine and faith in Jesus. So let's use them all to grow. You know, this summer I've been sharing stories about my Uncle Pete especially about the time that my brothers and I spent with him growing up in the summers when he came home to his little town in southern Minnesota. In that town, there was a real old-fashioned general store, not one of these uh, uh, too neat Hollywood versions of a general store like maybe uh, you see at a, uh, a Cracker Barrel or something, but, but a real old-fashioned store, the kind of store you get when your town is only one block square and there's no, one, no place else to get anything. So you could get gas, you could get hardware, you could get groceries. Anything you needed was at that store. Back in my great-grandmother's day, you didn't even need money. You just came in and traded some eggs or a hog or something and got store credit. In those days with Uncle Pete, that's where we got milk. Now, four growing boys drank a lot more milk than Grandma and Uncle Pete were used to buying. So we might make several trips to the store while we were staying there. Now, since you weren't there, I could tell you that we boys were craving this pure, natural milk that would help our bodies grow. But that would be a lie. What we craved was the penny candy and the gum on the counter. And this wasn't sugar-free gum either. This was the, the full-test bazooka bubble gum or, or packs of blackjack or, or beemons or clove or juicy fruit. Uncle Pete went there for the milk. But what we wanted was a sugar fix. And, and yes, he usually got us some candy or gum. But Uncle Pete also got us the milk to help us kids grow. And him too, perhaps to be strong and healthy. Milk does a body good. 
Well, St. Peter, our uncle in the faith, knew that lesson well. And that's why he teaches us to crave the pure spiritual milk that God provides. So that we can grow in faith and godliness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness and mutual affection and above all, love. God gives us everything we need to grow in all those things. To grow up in our salvation now that we've tasted the goodness of God. If God wanted us to sit there and do nothing, he'd have made us sea squirts. And we wouldn't need brains or a spine. But we aren't sea squirts. God made us to be a part of his body. We are Christians called to drink our milk and to grow strong in faith every day. So like newborn babies, crave the pure spiritual milk that God provides and grow up in your salvation. Let's remember that, that old phrase, got milk? It'll help us through this week. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we have tasted your goodness so many different times. And you have called us to be your own. That's why we're here, because you've, you've called us to worship today. But Lord, help us to, to look at our lives as Christians as more than, than sea squirts. Lord, help us to grow, to crave that from you, which will help us to do that. May we not settle for being sea squirts that, that just eat and sit there without a a thought without any movement, without even a spine. Lord, help us to be strong, thriving parts of your body, growing daily in, in all those things that you call us to so we can be effective as your witnesses in the world and carrying out our purpose as a part of your body. Lord, we are grateful for sweet treats, prano pups at the fair, and glasses of milk. But we are most grateful for the pure spiritual milk you give us through your word and through your spirit. So we offer you our thanks in Jesus' name.